Praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for your intention to make us vessels of love, Christ-like love. And we pray, Lord, you impart every life and impact us with your grace and the Christian experiences so that the love you fill us with will be supernatural coming from your throne in Jesus' name. I will pray that this kind of love you give us, you will manifest and demonstrate through us everywhere we find ourselves in Jesus' name. And whatever the situation or circumstance, this love will flow in demonstrative, dramatic, dynamic way in Jesus' name. Fill us with your love and help us, Lord, to live like Christ would live if he were in our situation today. Confirm it in every life, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight. And tonight we are coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're reading from verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, reading from verse 8. Charity never faileth. That's what charity means agape kind of love. Agape love. The love of God demonstrated through Christ and shown in the life of Christ and passed on to us when we're saved before salvation you might have natural love you might have worldly love you might have neighborly love but it is when you're saved when the lord washes your heart cleanses your heart makes you a new creature in christ and then the salvation of the lord is registered in your life and through that salvation you are able to manifest the kind of love the lord is talking about here as he mentions charity not only that when you go forward and you meet the lord and he circumcises your heart it takes away the depravity of the human nature and then he reproduces in you the very heart of christ and he says i will give you a new heart that new heart is the heart of Christ and that is the mind of Christ and it is that kind of heart that now generates and reproduces and demonstrates and shows the love of God in our heart. And it says the Holy Ghost sheds abroad the love of God in our hearts to everyone everywhere every time that the charity the lord is talking about here and he says this charity never faileth human love will fail even motherly love will fail natural love will fail worldly love will fail and the kind of love we try to demonstrate and we're struggling to demonstrate that one will fail at a particular time when the pressure is high enough and when the heat is high enough but the love of christ in the heart the love that comes with salvation and the love that comes with sanctification the love that comes with the circumcision of the heart that's the kind of love that never fails and it says in that verse age charity never faileth but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Then he tells us in verse 9, it says, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. It says in verse 10, But when that which is perfect is come, that is, after this life, when this whole dispensation is off, and then the perfect 
the, uh, the, uh, the perfect uh, dispensation will come as we move on to eternity and we move on to the very presence of God where there is no imperfection at all when that which is perfect is come then that which is for a part will vanish will be done away then in verse 11 it says when I was a child I speak as a child and I understood as a child I thought as a child but when I became a man I put away childish things it says we're going to get to glory and when we get to glory all the things that are childish here on earth all the earthly things all the worldly things all the temporal things everything will vanish away and then we become the full man and the perfect man over there yonder and then all the earthly things and the childish things everything will be put away and then it says in verse 12 it says for now we see through a glass darkly but then face to face now I know in part but then shall I know even as also I am known he's talking about the great beyond he's talking about heaven when we get to heaven and we will see the Lord face to face and then we will know all things as we are known then he tells us in verse 13 he says now abided faith at this time now faith abides Bites with faith we get saved and with faith we get sanctified and with faith we get healed and with faith we get our prayers answered faith abideth as long as we're here on earth we'll need that faith but now faith abideth and hope hope also abounds we're having the hope of glory and the hope of seeing the lord face to face and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure and that hope makes us to move on makes us to persevere makes us to endure trials and makes us to overcome temptation and makes us to take our stand because we know except we endure to the end we will not be able to enter there therefore there is faith that gets from God there is a hope that is looking forward that we're going to get there eventually by his grace and then he says and charity that is love these three but the greatest of these is charity is love why because when we get over there there'll be no need for faith anymore no sin no sickness no calamity and no problem at all so we're not going to manifest in faith over there to overcome anything and hope what we see we don't hope for anymore we see the lord face to face we see the glory and we see heaven we see the angels and we're and we there already we're not hoping anymore but there's something that will abide forever and that is is love love is eternal because god is eternal because christ is eternal because the holy spirit is eternal before the foundation of the world the father loved the son love had always been there and so when we get to heaven love will continue the father will still be loving the son the holy ghost will still be manifesting that love and then our love to god our love to christ our love to the saints our love to the perfected saints in heaven will still continue that's why it says love is the greatest because it abides forever today as we come to study the bible we're looking at the message christ like love in the heart that never fails the love in the head, it will fail. The love in our habit reflex action, where we get to doing something, doing something that appears to be of love, that one will eventually fail. But the love of Christ, we get saved, we get sanctified, and He puts His love and He implants His love in us, saving love, sanctifying love, purifying love. And when that is established in our hearts, that will never fail christ like love in the heart that never fails there are three things we're talking about number one the conservation of divine love is selfless godliness selfless godliness the conservation 
the preservation and the confirmation of that divine love with selfless godliness number two the confines the limitation the definite limitations of spectacular gifts those gifts are wonderful those gifts are good but they are limited to this earth and they're limited to some uh, uh, situations here on earth and therefore we need to know the confinement and the confines of the and the and definite limitations of spectacular uh, gifts number three the continuity of divine love in surpassing glory when we get to glory when we get to heaven when we get to the very presence of God, how that divine love in the heart will continue forever and ever. The continuity of divine love is surpassing glory. Let's come to number one. Number one is the conservation of divine love with selfless godliness. Let's look at that. Uh, uh, first Corinthians chapter 13, uh, the first line uh, in verse 8. Each charity never fails. Divine love never fails. The love implanted in the heart after our sins are forgiven, ours, after our sins are cleansed, after we have the new nature that Christ gives us at salvation, the love that comes with that, that never fails. The love that the Lord himself implants knows it says behold that the, i stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door i will come in and sup with him and christ is always with love and when he enters our heart when he occupies our heart when he dwells within us the love of christ dwells within us and there is a throne in our heart and then when he takes away self that is sitting on that throne when he takes away self that is controlling that throne and then he occupies the throne of our heart without a rival his love will occupy the throne of our heart it without any rival and then we conserve we preserve and we keep that divine love selflessly and in godliness and that's why it says this love christ-like love heavenly love divine love that it never fails charity never fails. now we need to know three things here number one the cornerstone the cornerstone of divine love from heaven the cornerstone the very foundation of that love in the heart and is coming from heaven number two is the constancy of divine love in holy hearts in pure hearts cannot retain that love cannot reveal that love cannot demonstrate that love it is a heart that is made holy that is purified that is sanctified that will then demonstrate and reveal that law from the earth number three is the circumcision granting us divine love for heavenly hope because we have a hope that endures a hope that we're looking forward to and that hope because of that hope which is heavenly because of that hope which is purified and we're looking forward that's why we need the circumcision of heart that will grant us that divine love look at number one number one is the cornerstone of divine love from heaven it tells us in ephesians chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 4 but god who is rich in mercy for his great love for his great love for his incomparable love, for his love, indisputable love, wherewith he loved us. And then in verse 5, what that love has done, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us, has raised us up, has resurrected us together with Christ. By 
grace are you saved and then he tells us in verse 13 in verse 13 he says but now in christ jesus you who are sometimes far off and made near nigh by the blood of christ then in verse 14 it says for he is our peace who hath made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us look at verse 20 in verse 20 it says and we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets jesus christ look at this jesus christ himself being the chief cornerstone the cornerstone of our salvation jesus christ himself being the cornerstone the cornerstone of our sanctification christ is a savior and is a healer and is a sanctifier and is the baptizer in the holy ghost in the cornerstone of the christian experience that we have and so if we're going to get saved if we're going to retain that divine love we must understand we leave the world we leave our sins we leave the darkness and we come to christ he is the very foundation of our salvation the cornerstone in first peter chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 6 first peter chapter 2 verse 6 wherefore also it is contained in the scripture it says behold i lay in zion a chief cornerstone elect precious and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded we come to christ we believe in him we believe in calvary we believe in his cross we believe in the one that went to pay the penalty for our sin and then we come we bow before him and we say lord it's because of our sins that you died we leave all those things we forsake all those things we believe in you we embrace you and we're going to go through life with you we take all our sins and we put on christ and he takes his own righteousness and he puts in us and that righteousness of christ contains also his love and we have that love now and it becomes the cornerstone of our lives the cornerstone of our action the cornerstone of everything that we do and we do that in love because he is the cornerstone he tells us in ephesians chapter 5 reading from verse 1 ephesians chapter 5 reading from verse 1 here he tells us be ye followers be ye therefore followers of God as their children and then in verse 2 he says and walk in love as Christ also has loved us walk in love as Christ also has loved us it's a cornerstone he loved us we accepted that love we embrace that love we're saved by that love and that love and salvation is transferred into our hearts and now we're able to walk in love and has given himself for us an offering and his sacrifice to god for his sweet smelly savor if that is the cornerstone what well then are we going to learn about this divine love number two is the constancy of the divine love in holy hearts the constancy of divine love in holy hearts we're told in john chapter 15 reading from verse 9 as the father has loved me so have i loved you continue ye in my love he's talking to those who are saved those who are born again those who have had their sins forgiven and those who have now had a new heart a new life a new disposition and they're living their life by the love of christ now they used to live their life by the human nature the human nature of hatred and the human nature of hurting other people but now they have died to all that and christ has demonstrated his love in their hearts but he says it's not going to be just a one-time event 
It's not going to be a one day event. There are people, all they can refer to is 19 such and such, 20 such and such. On this particular day, I got saved and event. That's the beginning, and that's very important. But then he wants us to continue in that salvation, in that love of God. And then he tells us in verse 10, he says in verse 10, that if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. You understand now? This love is not an emotional thing, it's not an erotic thing, it's not a worldly thing, it's not a fleshly thing. This is the love that respects and honors Christ. And because of that respect and honor for Christ, we then keep the commandments of the Lord. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. You understand? If you are not keeping the commandments of God, all the love you are talking about is love of the mouth. That one is not real. And that one does not show an evidence of genuine salvation. Then he tells us in verse 11, in verse 11, this six, have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. And then in verse 12, he said, this is my commandment that she love one another, husband and wife, that she love one another, parents and children, that she love one another, members of the church together, that she love one another, neighbors together, that she love one another, brothers and sisters, as I have loved you, continues, as I have loved you, visible, demonstrable as I have loved you. And then he tells us in verse 13, greater love as no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. He says, the love is talking about, it's not a talk of, I love you, I love you, and we never give anything, and we never do anything, and we never sacrifice anything, and we never deny ourselves for the joy of that person, and for the peace of heart, and the peace in between you and I. The love that just says, I love you, I love you, and will never deny himself of what is precious shows to him so the other person can make progress he says the kind of love he's talking about this agape love and this christ-like love is the love that lays down his life for his friends he tells us in john chapter 13 verse 1 john 13 verse 1 now before the feast of the passover when jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the father he should depart out of this life and he knew the method by which he was going to depart by betrayal by people telling lies on him by they taking him arresting him by they shouting find him by nailing him on the cross it was to be a departure with pain a departure with some agony a departure with some discomfort a departure with real suffering and yet look at this he said having loved his own Having loved his son, he knew what was in front of him. He knew all the betrayal before him, and he knew all the suffering before him. And yet, in spite of what he knew as to the method and the mode of his departure, having loved his own that were in the world, he loved them unto the end. He loved them unto the end. That's what the Lord is expecting of everyone saved. 
everyone sanctified everyone member of the body of Christ everyone a real child of God that will have his heart his heart of love his act of love his language of love his disposition of love that will manifest that love even when we have some challenges personal challenges or personal discomfort or personal suffering that we continue to love as he loved and then he says in verse 34 in verse 34 a new commandment i give unto you new commandment for the new creature if you have come out of darkness and you have come into the light a new commandment i give unto you if you are truly saved if you're a real child of God, if you have come out of Egypt and if you have gone through the wilderness and now you are walking side by side with the Lord and you love him and you accept him and you accept his word, a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another no separation that she love one another no divorce that she love one another no deep-seated hatred that she love one another no doing evil or planning evil against your fellow brother your fellow sister that she love one another as i have loved you that she also love one another and then he must start a five by this shall all men know and by this this that God himself know by this that by will Christ himself know by this shall the angels of God in heaven know by this shall all men know that she are my disciples if ye have love one to another we we'll come to number three here number three is the circumcision granting divine love for heavenly hope divine love because of the heavenly home you are thinking of you are dreaming of you are praying about you are desiring if you're going to get to that heavenly home and if you're going to have that heavenly hope if it is not going to be a disappointing hope that will never be realized if it is a hope you know is definite and divine and it's going to be realized we need to move on number one there's conversion number two there's a circumcision of the heart and it tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 30 looking at verse 6 Deuteronomy chapter 30 reading from verse 6 and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart there's a circumcision that Abraham was supposed to do for himself and for all the children and for all the descendants and for all the Jews. That circumcision was to be done by a man that will take a kind of surgical knife and cut off the extra flesh in the boy. But now this circumcision is not of the flesh. This circumcision is of the earth. And this circumcision is not done by a man. It is done by God himself. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. Now, if you're going to circumcise a boy, he has to be in your presence. And you have to bring the child near. And the child has to submit one way or the other to the circumcision. If the Lord is going to circumcise any heart, that heart must be willing. That heart must be yielded. That heart must be consecrated unto him. You are saved. That's why it's the Lord your God. And then now, there's still something to be done. You must be circumcised. You must be sanctified. The Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed. It doesn't stop with the first generation of believers, the heart of their seed. And then this is the consequence when he converts you and when he circumcises you, when he saves you and when he sanctifies you to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. In order to live in heaven, 
that thou mayest live in order to reside and to dwell in heaven forever and ever you must be converted you must be circumcised and while you are here waiting for that day of the home calling you have to live in love loving god loving christ loving the scriptures loving the word of god loving the commandments of god and loving the people of god that's what it takes and that love will abide and then when the trumpet shall sound those who love the lord with all their heart all their soul all their mind and the dead are raised incorruptible then we which are alive alive in the love of god will be caught up together with them i pray you'll be of that number in jesus name any amen in the congregation let's come to point number two now point number two we're looking at the confines and the definite limitations of spectacular gifts we're coming to first corinthians chapter 13 verse 8 and we're reading all through to verse 12 it says charity never fails, but whether there be prophecies they shall fail whether there be tongues, they shall cease. And whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. And then it says in verse 9, it says we know in part and we prophesy in part. Then in verse 10, it says, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Verse 11 tells us, it says, when I was a child, I speak as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. You know what childishness means? Childish, childishness is thinking like a child. Childishness is understanding like a child. Childishness is talking and acting like a child. And you know, the, uh, the Apostle Paul is talking about spiritual things. That, uh, you know, when you are born again, you are a babe in Christ. And it's a way you thought, there's a way you understood, and there's a way you spoke. After 30 years of conversion, after 30 years of saying we're following the Lord, there are some people that still think and understand and act act as a child they are not growing up but then paul the apostle said when i became a man i put away childish things and then in verse 12 in verse 12 he says for now we see through a glass darkly we don't see everything bright yet we don't see everything clear yet we just know in part and we see darkly but then face to face now i know in part but then shall I know even as also I am known. It's talking about spiritual gifts. It's talking about spectacular gifts. It's talking about supplementary gifts. And it says, number one, they're impermanent. Number two, they're imperfect. And number, uh, number three, they're impaired. Three things say, number one, the impermanence of spiritual gifts. Number two, the imperfection of spectacular gifts. And number three, the impairment of supplementary gifts. Let's look at number one. In number one, we're talking about the impermanence of spiritual gifts. It mentions uh, three gifts in verse eight. It says, but whether there be prophecies, that's one, they shall fail. Number two, whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Number three, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. And then it says in verse 9, in verse 9 it says, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. It's saying that all those gifts of the Spirit that we have learned about from chapter 12, that they will not continue until heaven what that means is they are only useful now they are only profitable now do you have the word of knowledge only in the world here word of wisdom only in the world here and the discerning of spirits only in the world here when we get to heaven we will know everything as we have known as we are known so a word a segment a beat a 
ritual of knowledge giving at a time will not be necessary over there. And then wisdom will have the perfection of wisdom when we get over there. So a little watch of wisdom will not be needed over there. There will be no problem there that we want to solve by the watch of wisdom and discerning of spirits. Only one spirit will be there. The spirit of her father and the Holy Ghost, so pretending everything, there'll be no contrary spirit, there'll be no evil spirit, there'll be no demonic spirit, there'll be no contradictory spirit, only one Holy Spirit over there. So when we get over there, the sending of spirits will not be needed. And faith, the faith to heal, and the faith to cast out devils, there's no sickness there to heal, and there's no evil spirit there to cast out. Because of that, all those gifts, and the gifts of healing, and the gifts of working miracles, all those things, they're useful here on earth. It doesn't get to heaven. We don't need them in heaven and speaking in the language of angels and men and prophesying. Behold, a child is born. Behold, a son is given. We don't need all that prophecy over there. The purpose of the son being given and the purpose of the child being born is fulfilled already. And then interpretation of tongues, we just understand everyone because there's only one language will go back to what it was at the beginning before the confusion of languages confusion of tongues in the tower of babel will be speaking only one language the language of heaven the language of god and the language of angels all together there that's why it says while we're here now this one will have these spiritual gifts are not Permanent, they will fade away because we'll come to perfection. Look at First Peter chapter one. We're reading from verse twenty-four. In first, eight, sorry, First Peter chapter one, verse twenty-four. For all flesh is as grass. And all the glory of man is at the flower of the grass. The grass withereth, and the, and the flower thereof falleth away. All the gifts, and all the graces, and all the goodness, and all the abilities, everything that comes to man, natural or spiritual, everything will cease when we get to heaven. Then in verse 25, he tells us, But the word of the Lord endure it forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. We'll get there. In that place of perfection, we'll get there. I will get there. You'll get there in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 22. We're looking at verse 3. Revelation chapter 22, verse 3. And there shall be no more curse. Amen. But the throne of God and, the, and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him. And then in verse 4, it tells us there in verse 4, when we get to that great beyond, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their forehead. And then in verse 5, it says, and there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither the light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. I'm one of those day. I said I am one of those day shall reign. You will reign with him forever and ever. Let's look at number two there. Number two is the imperfection of spectacular gifts. We're coming back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we're reading from verse 10. It says, but when that which is perfect is come, when that which is perfect is come, what that means says Christ is coming the perfect one and then the dead in Christ shall rise and then we which are alive will be caught up together with them in the clouds and so shall we ever be with the Lord that place we will be will not be like the earth here that's that which is perfect Christ comes 
Christ is perfect. It takes us to heaven and that is perfect. Then we have a dispensation and era ever and ever everlasting and that is perfect. Satan will not be there. Sin will not be there. Suffering will not be there. Curse will not be there. Evil will not be there. Pain will not be there. That's that which is perfect. When that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. And then in verse 11, he tells us, when I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, he's saying that when Christ comes, everyone that is raptured, you see today now, we're growing in knowledge little by little. We're growing in understanding little by little. We're growing in ability and skill little by little. All of a sudden, Christ comes and He takes us away, and everything that is earthly, that is imperfect, will be done away with, and then we become perfect in the sight of God. Real perfection, total perfection, inward and outward, in the spirit, in the soul, in the body, will become totally perfect. A perfect man in a perfect place, in perfect eternity with perfect God living with the perfection all through eternity when that is come then we become a man and then we put away childish things because all the present system is imperfect we're going to that place which is perfect I pray you'll be there I said, I pray you'll be there. Revelation chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 22. Revelation chapter 21, and we're reading from verse 22. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb at the temple of it. And then in verse 23, it tells us, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. That is that which is perfect will be on that other side, and all the imperfect of the present spectacular gifts, all that will vanish away and we will see the Lord face to face as he is. We'll abide with him and great will be our joy and reward when we get home at last in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Number three is the impairment of supplementary gifts supplementary gift. That word supplementary means that it is just added. There's the main meal. There's the main experience. Salvation, that's the main thing. All the gifts, supplementary. Sanctification, without holiness, no man shall say the Lord. That's the main thing. But all the healing and all the casting out of devils, all the manifestation of spiritual gifts, all that is supplementary. The main thing, salvation. The main thing, sanctification. The main thing, divine love of God in the heart of man. And that can be supplemented when the need is there with healing, with miracle. But all those things are not sufficient. We come to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. For now we we'll see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part whatever gift you have, you know in part. And whatever knowledge you have, whatever wisdom you have, and whatever insight you have, whatever revelation you have, everyone knows in part. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as I am known. Perfect knowledge will come. Perfect experience will come. A perfect dwelling fellowship with God will come. In Philippians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 12. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Not as do, I had already attained. That's Paul the Apostle. With all the gifts he had, not as do, I'd already attained. With all the experiences he had, 
not as though had already attained. He had gone to the third heaven, but was not allowed to stay there permanently. It wasn't time yet. He was brought back to this world, not as though had already attained. Either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. And then in verse 13, he tells us, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I am saved, but there's still more. I am sanctified, but there's still more. I have the gifts of the Spirit, but there's still more. I've been to the third heavens, but there's still more. I heard language, I heard, and I saw revelation that I never thought of before, but there's still more. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto things that are before, he says now in verse 14, I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He says day by day and every day that comes, I'm leaving the past behind and I'm moving on, I'm moving forward, I'm reaching forth and I'm pressing on and I want to be higher today than I was yesterday. I want to know more today than I knew yesterday. I want to have the experience of God that more than I had yesterday, I'm pressing forward towards the mark of the calling of Christ Jesus. It tells us in 1 John chapter 3 verse 2, First John chapter 3, verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God by salvation. Now are we the sons of God by experience with God. Now are we the sons of God and we relate with God as son to the Father. As their children were walking in love because now we're sons of God and he commands us, be ye holy for I am holy. And now we're the sons of God by experience were the sons of God by the manner of life that we live and it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when it shall appear we shall be like him we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is and then in verse 3 it tells us and every man that has this hope in him purify himself not just I come to church I hear but I don't walk on it I don't pray about it I learn but it's not translated into my life those souls are not going to be with the Lord at the time of the rapture. I belong to the church, but the church doesn't have impact and influence in my heart, in my life, in my character. Every man that has this hope of seeing him and being with him, even as he is, every man that has this hope in him, purifies himself he does not allow all the dirt all the defilement all the fleshly things all the worldly things to come in and take root in his life he purifies himself even as he is pure and is always looking unto the lord so that the image of the lord the purity of the lord the holiness of the lord will be reflected in his life in second corinthians chapter 3 reading from verse 18 it says but we all we all those who have the hope of heaven but we all those who want to see him on that final day and we all those who want to be a member of the raptured body of Christ the triumphant says we all with open face beholding us in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed those, those are the people that are going to get to heaven. They are changed. They are not in their natural self anymore. They are not in their sinful habit anymore. They are not in their worldly nature anymore. They are not of having uh, uh, the depraved nature anymore. They are changed. They are transformed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. I pray the Lord will 
effect that in every life in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. That's the continuity of divine love in surpassing glory. The continuity of divine love is surpassing glory. You know, as we're here in this world, we gather, we collect, we amass a lot of things. And many of those things, virtually all of them, will not leave this world with us. How many houses do you have when you die? You leave them behind. How much land do you have when you die? You leave it behind. How many certificates are you trying to gather together when you die? You leave everything behind. How many children? How many wives? Some people are gathering women, gathering wives, as if one is not sufficient for them. When you die, you leave everything behind. Whatever you have here, whatever you have labored for here, you will not take them to heaven. But the love of God that you have here was salvation. The love of God that you have here was sanctification, holiness of heart. The love of God that you have with your intimacy with God, with your fellowship with God, that's the only thing that will cross the line with you and then you go with that love. And if you don't have that love, the gate of heaven will not be opened unto you. That's why we're talking about the continuity of the divine love is surpassing glory in first corinthians chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 13 and now abided faith hope charity divine love these three but the greatest of these is charity we're looking at three things then number one a showing faith in god for sufficient grace my grace is sufficient for you, sufficient for salvation, grace, sufficient for sanctification, grace, sufficient for living the overcoming life, grace, sufficient for overcoming all the obstacles, all the trials, all the temptations, all the persecution that may come upon you, grace, sufficient to live a radiant life, a glorious life, a sanctified life, a purified life, grace, the grace to make us walk in the will of God, in the word of God, it is all sufficient and it is given by faith, assuring faith in God for sufficient grace. Number two, abiding hope of the gospel, the hope of the gospel that abides every time when you are going to trial, you have hope, that's why you're not giving up, that's why you're persevering, because you know at the end of it all, the bright hope of heaven that you're going to have, abiding hope of the gospel with spiritual guidance. And then number three, ascending love, increasing love, upgraded love, the love that gets you higher and higher and higher, ascending love through godliness to surpassing glory. One by one, let's look at number one, assuring faith in God for sufficient grace. It says, and now abideth faith. Now, at this time, abided faith. At the point of salvation, abided faith. At the point of sanctification, abided faith. At the time of trials, at the time of tribulation, at the time of persecution, now abided faith. And when the time comes to cross over, and you are just about to move from earth to heaven, at that time to cross over, you need the faith that got you saved, that you believe you are not relying upon the works of your hand, you are not relying upon any good thing that you have done. You say, Christ and Christ alone is my Savior. I still believe in my heart that He rose from the dead, and I confess with my mouth that He is my Lord. He rose from the dead. He is my Savior. On the basis of that faith in Christ, you are crossing over from earth to heaven until the point of death now abideth faith look at Ephesians chapter 2 we're reading from verse 8 for by grace are you saved through faith by grace are you saved not 
church membership through faith by grace are you saved not the works of your hand i'm good i'm this i'm that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. But Christ has died for us. And the gift of God is eternal life in Christ. You believe that. You embrace that. You accept that. By grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And then in verse 9, it says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. Then in verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we shall walk in them. In Romans chapter 5, reading from verse 1, Romans chapter 5, reading from verse 1, therefore being justified by faith, being justified by faith, the Lord looks at us after forgiving us just as if we had never sinned. He justifies, he forgives, he sets free, and all the condemnation of the past, he takes all that away, he puts our guilt, he puts our punishment on Christ our Savior, and he says we're free. There's no condemnation now to them that walk in the Spirit who do not walk after the flesh. We're justified, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in verse 2, he tells us in verse 2, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Hebrews chapter 12, we're reading from verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus, the faith that saves is the faith that comes from Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. If it's the faith of the head, the faith of the mind, the faith from psychology, the faith from philosophy, the faith from the persuasion of men, that doesn't sin, but the faith whose author is Christ and is the one that is perfecting that faith. That's the one that says, what kind of faith do you have? When Christ gives that faith, you're able to look at Calvary, you're able to look at his sacrifice, and then it registers in your heart, he did that for me. And because, you know, he did that for you, then all the burden of sin is gone. All the load of sin is gone. He is the author and the finisher of our faith or for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set now on the right hand of the throne of god look at what that faith it produced verse 14 in verse 14 it says follow peace with all men it will come naturally it will come as a corollary as a consequence of having that faith in Christ as your savior he makes he is a prince of peace and therefore he makes you to follow peace with all men if you cannot follow peace with all men well the men the women who are nearest and closest to you always grinding something always fighting about something always striving you are not a man of peace you are not a woman of peace you don't have the salvation that Christ gives when we have the salvation that Christ gives we follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord and then he tells us in verse 28 in verse 28 it says wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Number two now is the abiding hope of the gospel was spiritual guidance. You remember 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 13 it says and now abideth faith, that's one, and hope. Abideth hope. 
abiding hope of the gospel with spiritual guidance. In Colossians chapter 1, reading from verse 23, it says, If he continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. You abide in faith, you continue in faith, you walk by faith, and not by such you overcome the world by faith. And while that faith is abiding, and while that faith is in place, then you are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which ye which was preached to every creature which is under heaven whereby whereof i paul i am a minister look at verse 27 in verse 27 it says to whom god would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you. Christ the Savior in you. Christ the Sanctifier in you. Christ the Redeemer, living big and living active in you. When that Christ the Savior, Christ the Redeemer, Christ the Sanctifier. He keeps you saved. He keeps you sanctified. He keeps you holy. When He abides in you, that is the hope of glory. And I pray that your hope will not fade away in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 3. In First Peter chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again, look at this, unto a lively hope. He begat us. He saved us. He, we were born again into a lively hope, not a rotting hope, not a, not a supposed hope. I think I'll get there. That's not hope. Lively hope. The one that the salvation is sure. The life is Christ-like. And the life is holy. And he has this hope of the gospel. And the hope of seeing his face is alive and active in him. That's the hope that we are born into. He has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Christ Jesus from the dead. Then in verse 4, he talks about an inheritance incorruptible on the fault that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Verse 5 then tells us who are kept by the power of God through faith. We are kept by the power of God through faith. Temptation knocks at the door. We are kept by the power of God through faith. Satan and the world beckoning on us to backslide and to follow after them. We are kept by the power of God through faith. The flesh is having a pulling that was, and then instead of falling, was still standing because the flesh and the works of the flesh will not have power over us, over me, over you, in Jesus' name, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. I pray that this hope of the gospel you will not miss in Jesus' name. Number one is assuring faith. Number two is abiding hope. Number three now is ascending love through godliness to surpassing glory. Ascending love is not a dwindling love. A love that is going down a love that is decreasing you see for many people when they get through many trials then their love will wane 
inner, their love will decrease when they pass through some tight corners and through some pressure and through some persecution. Then their love will wane, their love will decrease. It's like, you know, uh, the love is going by degrees. You know, uh, one drop has gone, another drop is gone, another drop is gone, and the love is going down and down. And if it continues like that, before long, before Christ comes, all the love is gone. They don't love anybody anymore. They've gone through so much, and their language, you can tell, their attitude, you can tell, their disposition, you can tell, and their, you know, their feeling, you can tell. It's a look on their face, and you go through life without love. Everything has leaked away, but when you are in Christ all the time, you're praying all the time, you're looking forward all the time, you're expecting all the time, and you're saying, I don't know when Christ will come, and temptation might come, no problem, persecution might come, no problem, and whatever it is, affliction might be there, no problem, and you're saying, oh Lord, I know, now abide that faith, and now abide the hope, and now abide the charity. These three, the greatest is love, the greatest is charity, I don't want to be found here on earth without the love of God. When Christ will come, it will make you to so be praying and exercising all that God has given you so that your love is ascending through godliness until you pass on to surpassing glory. That's why it says, and now abided faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Charity. And look at First John chapter 4, reading from verse 8. First John chapter 4, verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. He who goes through life, everything it does. It's not thinking about love towards my brother, love towards my sister. It's thinking about what makes me happy. If I slap somebody and that makes me happy, then I keep on slapping people. If I tread on people and that makes me happy, because the corrupt nature, the human nature, the unsaved nature is happy when it's cruel. It's happy when it does evil to other people. It doesn't have the love of God. And it says, he that loves Loveth not, knoweth not God. It's not born again. It's not a child of God. For God is love. And then in verse 16, it says, For we and we have believed, we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Because you believe in that love, we have known, we have believed the love that God has to us. God is love. God is love. Everything he does in love, he sends the message of repentance to us, that's love. He sends the message of forgiveness to us, that's love. He sends the message of salvation to us, that's love. He sends the message of the kingdom. He wants you to come into his kingdom. That's his love. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love, dwelleth in God, and God in him. He calls you, and you leave the world of hatred, you leave the world of animosity, you leave the world of evil, you leave the world of sin and sinning, and you come to God, and then the love of God will fill your heart, will saturate your heart, and then through you, that love will flow out to other people. And the love of God is the love that Christ has demonstrated. Look at John chapter 17, and we were reading from verse 24. John chapter 17, verse 24, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me to be my disciples, whom thou hast given me to be my followers, whom thou hast given me to be born again new creatures in Christ, I will that those that were given me 
Be with me where I am, no hatred there. Be with me where I am, no animosity there. Be with me where I am, no madness there. Be with me where I am, there's no wickedness there. Be with me where I am, there's no Satan, there's no evil spirit there. Be with me where I am, there is nothing of evil and nothing of this world over there. Only the grace of God and the love of God and the faith we have in Christ and the hope we have in Christ and the nature of Christ which is the nature of love and Jesus Christ prayed and said father I will I desire that they also whom thou was giving me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory you behold his glory when we get to heaven, we'll see the heavenly, fa heavenly Father face to face. When we get to heaven, we'll see all those angels of God that never sinned in their lives since they were created. We'll see them dressed in white, raiment glistening in heaven. When we get to heaven, we'll see all the redeemed souls of men and women who have gone to the great beyond and their perpetual, perfect, everlasting sins. When we get to heaven, heaven will see little little children who have died before the age of accountability and they're over there when we get to heaven we'll see all the writers and the authors of this bible that has made us to know god now paul the apostle and peter and john and james and matthew and luke and then stephen the first matter we're going to see him when we get over there when we get to heaven all those who have been in our church here and they were real christian real believers and they have gone to the grave beyond we're going to see them and then glory we're going to see you there I said, we're going to see you there. And then all of us will see the radiance of the Lord Jesus Christ, holy and righteous, exalted and glorified. And we'll see the beauty of heaven. Well, we'll see whatever it is in this world that will try to shut your eyes, attract your attention, and make you to go the other direction and not see him that final day. If you are wise, if you are wise, you will brush everything aside and you will say nothing thing will hinder me i will see him on that day i will see christ i will see the father and i'll see the holy ghost i'll see all the saints of god and i will walk on that streets of gold in heaven and then we're over there never to come to sorrow or suffering or, or any kind of evil anymore the lord jesus said father i will i desire i want i'm passionately desirous that they also thou has given me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world and then in verse 25 he tells us it says O righteous father the world has not known thee but I have known thee and these have known that thou hast sent me and then in verse 26 he tells us he says I and I have declared unto them thy name and will declare Clear it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me, that the love, everlasting love, that the love, pure love, that the love, perfect love, that the love, undefiled love, that the, that the love, heavenly love, like the love, everlasting, eternal love, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them me be in them and i in them can i tell you oil and water don't mix if there's hatred there that love that jesus prayed about the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them if there's hatred there if there's cruelty there if there's sin there if there's self-centered there, if there is, you know, I want to have my way. If that is there, the love wherewith 
God the Father, as Lord the Son, that love is not in you. But the prayer of the Lord Jesus is sanctified them by thy truth, thy watch is truth. And then the conclusion of that prayer is what we are looking at here now, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. If Satan is on the heart, sitting on the throne of the heart, Christ will not be struggling with Satan in your heart. If the demons are there, if the love of the world is there, if self-centeredness is there, if evil is there, Christ will not be there. He wants to be there, to be your Lord, to be your King, and to reign without a rival. That the, the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. He will do it. I said he will do it. You'll be a true believer. His love will be in you. And then he will dwell in your heart without a rival. There will be faith there. There will be hope there. There will be love that, that shall never fail in your heart as well. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's rise up now and take everything to the Lord in prayer. Want to talk to the Lord in prayer? That the Lord himself will implant this love, the love that never fails, implant it in our hearts. Open your mouth and pray. The cornerstone of this divine love. Have you met him? Have you connected with him? Have you given yourself to him? We're praying, we're not meditating, we're not thinking. Don't keep quiet. Let this, let this be a praying church. The cornerstone. Reconnect. Reaffirm. Your faith in Christ is your only hope. Your only savior. There's no other savior. There's no other cornerstone on which to build your Christian life, heavenly life, glorious life. The Father has made him the cornerstone. The prophets prophesied is the cornerstone. Is a cornerstone of divine love. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. You see, the author of your faith, that's the only kind of faith that saves the faith that Christ Himself generates in our heart and that faith turns away from sin turns away from evil turns away from anything different from love contrary to love believe on him The cornerstone of divine love from heaven. When he comes see, he brings in his love. That love is greater than fleshly love, human love, erotic love. The love that wants to take a advantage of another to satisfy the animal nature but the love he gives divine love from heaven will cancel selfishness self-centeredness and that love coming from Christ 
as Christ dwells and abides there is constant. It's not a wavering love going up, coming down. It's a love that has a loving disposition towards other people. Love without animosity. Love without hypocrisy. Love without pretense. Love without secret cruelty. Love without anger. The love of Christ. And we receive uh, at salvation. And as we move on, and our hearts are circumcised, and we're made holy, we're sanctified, and the Adamic nature is dealt with, removed from the throne of the heart, so Christ can reign without a rival in our hearts. He gives us that heavenly love. And that love is constant. Conversion, circumcision of the heart that fills the heart with real love divine. All the gifts of the Spirit, they are good in the limited place. But those gifts without love will not take anyone to heaven. Faith, not a moving faith, without charity, without love, will not grant anyone a place, a seat, a position in heaven. Prophecy, speaking in tongues with interpretation, spectacular, sensational gifts without love, abiding love, increasing love, ascending love, on discriminating love, all those gifts without the divine love of God in the heart will not take anyone to heaven. They are confined, they are limited in their usefulness. They are confined to usefulness only on this earth. And if only in this world we have hope in Christ, we'll be of all men, of all women, the most miserable. Don't allow that which is not permanent to displace the permanent experience of divine love in your heart. Don't allow that which is not perfect to replace the perfect love of God in your heart. Don't allow the impaired gifts supplementary to block the divine love that is supreme in your life. Do you feel that love towards your neighbor? Is there malice, animosity, unforgiving spirit, 
merciless disposition wicked thoughts are you purged purified cleansed from the animal nature beastly nature and the love of God flowing through you to people around you to friends and foes are you born again? what's the proof? what's the evidence? It's the divine love shed abroad in our hearts that is the evidence of that new birth experience Don't run after that which is not permanent and forget the permanent, perfect love of God. And renew that love before the Lord and say, Lord, I know this, the one single thing, ascending love, Increasing love, transparent love, Christ-like love, sanctifying love. The one single thing that will make me to see you face to face on that final day. You must have that. You have faith now, assuring faith, built on the word of God he promises salvation and if you ask him to save you and to make that salvation real get rid of all sin in the private in the public and then he gives you the grace for righteous living then you're sure I'm saved you don't only stop at salvation, circumcision of heart, sanctification, and the Lord Jesus died on the cross of Calvary to provide that sanctification experience for us. And when that is there, you'll be holy in heart, Holy in your disposition, holy in your plans, holy in your interaction with people. And it will be demonstrable. Remember, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. And let the love of God, ascending love of God, increasing love of God, heavenly love of God, transparent love of God, practical love of God, reign in your heart. Without that, that kind of love, without that, transparent love, without that, increasing, ascending, practical, progressing, love of God, towards everyone and without a definite no so experience I know it definite 
you know when God touched your heart, transformed your heart, deposited that love or failing love in your heart, you know. You feel it within you. And that love moves you and leads you in interaction, in relationship, in fellowship. The defiling love of the world is cleansed off, taken off, erased. And it perfects your experience of love. That's what it takes. And then when he comes, and it's coming soon. When he comes, and it's coming for the saints. When he comes, it's coming for those who have definite experience of salvation and sanctification with him. When he comes, he'll take us home to a place where evil, sin, animosity, hatred, malice will never enter. Be sure that has touched your heart. Be sure that he knows you as one of the saints abiding in love until he comes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for what we have learned today. We pray that you transfer all this knowledge from the head to the heart of everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Spirit of the living God, take all the words we have heard and draw us near and nearer close and closer to the Lord our Savior, the Lord our sanctifier, the Lord our Redeemer in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray that Christ will be the cornerstone of divine love in every heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Will be the power that makes us to continue in this love, abiding love, Ascending love, increasing love of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we pray that this faith and this hope and this love that were brought up in our heart will make us to walk and live and move in the fullness of your revelation until we see you face to face in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever is not of love, cut off, cleanse away, remove, cast out from every one of our lives. And plant the love of Christ, heavenly and holy and spotless in every one of our hearts. And Lord, we pray, believers will see that love. Neighbors will see that love. We ourselves will feel that love and we will know things are no more the same in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. As we go out, we pray there will be a demonstration of everything we have learned today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.